Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching. This is David Hopper, the Austin Bureau Chief of 360DegreeSound.com. I'm going to be interviewing the former Miss Mississippi and former Miss USA Asia Branch. Asia's, Asia is a native of Boonville, Mississippi, and a graduate of the University of Mississippi, Ole Miss. Uh, she's going to be talking about her country music career. Uh, this Saturday, February 3rd, Asia will be performing at the Crossroads Arena in Corinth, Mississippi. Asia, thank you so much for joining 360 Degrees. Yes, South. thank you so much. Yeah, so as I just said, you'll be uh, performing uh, this Saturday, Crossroads Arena in Corinth, um, opening for Drake White, I understand. Uh, so um, I'm sure some of our viewers are familiar with your uh, pageant success and background, but they may not know that you also sing country. So uh, what what can uh, attendees expect from your from your show Saturday? Well, I feel like with my set, I'm doing a 30 minute set opening up the entire show. It's seven o'clock on the dot. Super exciting. Um, but I know people know so much about my pageant background and everything and no one really associates me as being a music artist. So it's super exciting and something fresh and new that I'm able to bring out. But um, they can expect a little bit of everything. I mean, obviously it is country, but um one of the songs is a little bit pop and then there's one that just kind of tells the story of my life um and it's called when it ain't <laughs> and it's basically talking about the percent of the time that i spend all dolled up and in front of lights or in front of crowds um and then the t the other percentage of the time that i'm just laid back enjoying you know visiting home like going back to my roots and just really appreciating and soaking all of that in so um there's some personal songs in there and then there's some fun songs that anyone can relate to but at the end of the day i hope everyone loves it but um there there should be a little bit of something for everyone some of it's a little um a little more poppy some of it's a little more uh I don't want to say honky tonk, but you know, we've got, we've got a variety in there because that was the one goal that I had when writing these songs was that I didn't want all of them to sound the same. I didn't want you to, you know, play like the entire album and it just every song one after another sounded very similar. I wanted there to be a great variety in there. So. Okay. Yeah. I was that's important to have a variety. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about your songwriting. Did, did you write all these yourself or? Um, no, I had a lot of help. Um, I think you need a village really when it comes to creating anything that's, that's going to be, um, you know, a piece of art, a piece of magic. And so I've had some really incredible people, um, on this journey with me. Um, there's a gentleman, my producer, uh, David Duncan, who has been instrumental in this entire process. And, um, he'll actually be playing the electric guitar, um, at the show this Saturday. And then Jacob Lutz, he's an artist in Nashville. He has been so wonderful. He's so gifted and so talented. So, you know, taking an idea to him, he's able to, you know, really kind of put it into better words than you can imagine. And so, I mean, it's been a, a collaborative effort. And then Dylan Keith has also um, been very instrumental in songwriting and just developing and composing the tracks as well. So that's kind of been our, our main team there that we've all been able to work together. Um, but I think that we've, we've meshed really well and we've been able to work super well to create things. They want it to be me, you know? So they're like, all right, Asia, you tell us what you want and, you know, we're going to work with you to help you create that. So it's nice to have their support and their guidance because they are so, um, so well-versed in the world of music and artistry. And so um, they're helping me learn a lot along the way, uh, but they've been incredible in this journey. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if you could back up some and like tell us a little bit about your interest in country music. Was it something you always loved growing up and uh, kind of who, kind of maybe some of the artists you liked uh, growing up? Yeah, so I feel like Growing up, uh, I was exposed to a lot of different types of music. So my taste in music is eclectic, um, but I've always, always, always loved country music. I remember my dad introduced me to the Shania Twain record Up, the green one. Mm -hmm. And I was five years old. And I mean, to this day, I know every single song on that album, but that really opened my eyes to country music. And I think that's where I first developed my love for it. And then it just continued growing from there. 
And, um, and it's so funny because I feel like people always expect me to give a different answer when they're like, Oh yeah, what's your favorite genre? And I mean, since day one, it's been country. So while I do have, you know, artists that have inspired me along the way, you know, outside of Shania Twain, um, and Carrie Underwood, um, I also have, you know, um, really been inspired by Beyonce and Mariah Carey and it just the list it goes on and on and on you know I I love pop music I mean Dua Lipa is one of the best performers so I take notes from her as far as stage performance and things of that nature so I feel like I pick from every genre when it comes to how I'm developing myself as an artist and a performer um but I have had a love for country music since I was a wee little tot so that's where that stems from but I love all styles of music and I think that comes into play when writing and creating songs because I'm able to kind of play into different genres and things I like about each one and kind of mesh it together to kind of fit my sound, but still keeping it country, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned Dua Lipa. I'm excited for the new album. I thought Future and Nostalgia was so good. And that was oh my gosh, my favorites of that year. <laughs> <laughs> She's great. Um yeah, so so uh, I think that's interesting. You know how many different genres you're into, and 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 different styles you've you've sung over the years. I, I was curious, like, um, does singing country music differ from singing other genres, and are, are there any specific challenges with with country singing country? Or I don't think so. I think the biggest challenge for me has been um, getting my twang back. <laughs> because I have lived so many places and I've just through pageantry I've kind of suppressed it just for the enunciation and making sure that people from anywhere can understand what it is that I'm saying I mean I love a southern twang I love a southern accent um that's just like music to my ears I remember in high school my Spanish teacher she was a Dominican Republic and she was always just like oh the southern twang is just <laughs> music to my ears you know um and I was like, you know what? It is truly beautiful. So um, it's kind of been suppressed over the years uh, through as I've competed in pageants and as I've moved all over the country. Um, and so being able to like let it resurface and come back through naturally has been so much fun to just like hear people are like, whoa, like I never <laughs> heard your country accent. I'm like, yeah, she's in there. She's excited to come back out. But I think that's been the biggest challenge for me is, you know, incorporating that back into music and just letting it flow naturally and not worrying about like, oh my goodness, I need to say this better. Or I need to, you know, reduce my accent for this, but just being able to be free and be myself while creating this music has just been so refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so being in pageants maybe made you suppress the accent some, but I, I was curious in maybe some of the ways in which you feel your uh, pageant experience and serving as Miss USA uh, prepared you for singing and performing uh, country? I, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think that everything in life kind of aligns as it should. And um, I feel like I wouldn't be prepared to take on this journey as a country artist if it weren't for my background in pageantry. Uh, growing up in high school, I had terrible stage fright. And people would not believe it to this day because I will you know, they're like, Asia, get up there and sing. Like we, I was at a restaurant a couple of years ago and um, there was live music and one of my friends threw me up there and I sang a country song. Of course, it's my go-to karaoke, anything. I always go straight towards country, but um, yeah, no, I feel like developing my confidence, developing my communication skills over the years through pageantry has definitely helped me in this journey and making things so much easier. I, um, I used to always joke and tell people that, you know, when I was on stage competing for Miss Mississippi the year that I won, my feet were shaking as I was answering my question and, you know, my talent. And I was always so nervous. And now, I mean, I've always had a love for singing and performing, but with the pressure of being judged, you know, and, and knowing that your placement relies on how well you're doing, it always just choked me up. And I felt like I wasn't able to fully, ex ex you know, let my voice come out. It was like my nerves, I would get kind of choked up. And so it sounded like my, my vocals were a little bit suppressed, I guess you could say, but um, going through all of that and really pushing myself outside of my comfort.
puppetry and just really strive to better grow and get comfortable in front of audiences and everything. I feel like really helped me in this journey because now I'm like, yes, let's do it. I'm super excited. I've, you know, gotten over that hump years ago. And I feel like over the years, I've just had opportunity after opportunity that has prepared me for this moment now and helped me really feel comfortable in my shoes and comfortable in front of audiences of various sizes. So I think that pageantry definitely uh, was a huge component um, to making this possible for me. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, I was wondering uh, what your plans were as far as recording, like if you had any like, um, uh, you know, plans for singles or albums or anything like that? So um, it's kind of been a back and forth. We have a lot of songs written um, and we've got rough tracks of them, but we were trying to decide if we wanted to release one huge album or if we wanted to do two EPs. Um, and because the songs, they're so great and I, I want to release them all, but it is a lot, a lot of work. And uh, I know perfection doesn't exist, but I want them to be as close to perfect when they are released. So we are going to release one single, hopefully within the next two months. Um, and it is a song that I'll be performing in the show. It's the first um, the first original that we'll be doing in the show because I'm doing a couple covers as well. Um, and it's called Feel Like Flying. So I'm super excited about that. It's fun. It's country pop. Um, and it's just, it's just a pretty catchy song. Like you find yourself just kind of bobbing along to it, whether you know the words or not. And that's what I love about it. So that'll be our first release. And then, um, after that, we'll either, you know, drop a chunk at once or just slowly release one right after another. But I'm super, super, super excited about it. I can't wait for everyone to hear it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, let's see. Uh... Oh yeah, I, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, I, I was wondering kind of what your goals are as a, as a country artist. Um, if there's any kind of um, specific you have in mind, or just kind of taking it one song at a time, or <laughs> I'm taking it one song at a time. But I do. I mean, if people haven't figured this out by now, um, I dream big, <laughs> and I I set big goals for myself in life. And so obviously the goal would be to perform on the CMAs and, you know, to win a Grammy, like all of those things, but they take time. And um, so I'm just hoping that I'm able to put music out there that people truly fall in love with and that, you know, they'll love me as an artist and as a person as well. And, you know, I, I mean, the goal would be to be as big as Taylor Swift, you know, I mean, she's got the largest following and she stays true to herself and she puts out great music and it's such an inspiration. So, I mean, End goal, absolutely. I would love to be someone that everyone knows and and someone who is just well respected and um and is is given the accolades for their for their gifts and their talent. So that's the ultimate goal. Um I'm gonna keep pushing and we're gonna keep releasing and we're gonna we're gonna keep the ball rolling on this thing until we reach the top and get to where we wanna be. I mean, I competed for Miss Mississippi for three years before I won and then from there didn't win at Miss America, but one Miss Mississippi USA and one Miss USA. So it's like those things, those no's that come um, on the journey uh, just help prepare you for the yeses that are to come and the moments that are right for you. So I'll keep that mindset throughout this journey as well. And hopefully I will be on the CMA stage one day. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah, you mentioned, you know, Sonata Twain was kind of in your introduction to country and, and you know, you've been a, a fan since you were a, uh, a young child um so uh i was kind of wondering what you made of today's scene uh i know of course morgan wallen luke combs zach bryan laney wilson are a couple couple of the biggest names um uh just kind of kind of kind of what you make of the country music out there today and and i guess the second part of that question would be how how you think you know your music and your songs will um kind of st stand out in the in the landscape yeah i mean i love all of today's artists i mean oh I, I'm like trying to pick like my top three right now. Um, it's so hard because there's so much good music out right now. I mean, you know, Lainey Wilson is, is top in the chart. She's awesome. Super, super talented. I was just listening to wild, uh, wild flowers and wild horses, um, this afternoon. And then Megan Maroney, huge, huge fan. I know she's kind of more of a mid tempo kind of style artist, but 
I love the message and the meaning. That's a huge thing for me is, you know, having a story behind the words and, you know, being able to relate. That's been my number one thing forever is like authenticity and relatability, even through my pageant journey. So um, these are people that I, I listen to and I, I hear the lyrics, I feel the lyrics, and that's something that I want to have within my music as well. So I'm just trying to like learn from the people that are out there now. And um, Zach Bryan, I mean so talented like the layer like his music moves me and that's what I look for when I listen to music like I want to feel something and these these the songs that I that I hear now are they really do move me and I just use that as as an inspiration and motivation to continue doing that within my songs my own songs as well so I mean I mean and then you've got Jelly Roll who um, is super talented, Jesse Murph. I mean, the list truly does go on and on. Lauren Elena, she was a huge inspiration for me when I was a child, you know, watching her on American Idol um, and just seeing her grow and develop over the years. I saw her in concert probably four or five years ago, and it just really ignited that spark in me. To, it made me feel like that's what I should be doing. You know, I it really kind of, it, it touched my heart. And I still like look back to that moment because I could still feel exactly what I felt in that moment when I was standing in the crowd in her concert in Nashville. And I was just like, this is like truly where my heart feels like it belongs. Um, and so just finding those those little key moments that kind of reassure me and make me feel like I'm on the right path. But um, I mean, there's probably there's not an artist out there that I don't love and that I can't find something to learn from. And I think that's one of the biggest things you know, as you're trying to develop yourself as an artist is I know I don't know it all. And I am a sponge when it comes to um, the world of music, because I want to continue to learn and I want to continue to grow and I don't want to become stagnant at any point. I want to continue developing and becoming a better version of myself and a better artist and, you know, a better role model for fans and followers. So it's always it's always about growth. It's always about the journey and, and becoming better and and all facets of things yeah. awesome great yeah speaking of your fans and followers i guess finally just um your message for them i, I i'm sure you'll have a lot of fans uh there this saturday at your show at the crossroads arena in corinth but um you know for those who can't uh make that show just kind of how they'll um follow along with your career what, what would you like to say to them um uh, well first of all i i always just want to say thank you so much you know i honestly I know that I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for the people that have supported me and loved me and followed me over the years and even to new followers as well. So I love and appreciate you so, so much. Um, but I, I just hope that you'll keep up with me. Obviously, I'll post on my social medias at Asia Danielle, but um, my website is it's, it's still under construction, but it's asiabranchmusic.com. So once that's up and running, I mean, it's it's out there, but you can't see anything on it. It's just like coming soon. <laughs> but um, everything will be there. I, I will post links to new releases and any shows that I'll be doing. So people can always look there and see where I'll be next. Great. Well, thank you so much, Asia. Uh, best of luck uh, this Saturday. And we look forward to following your career and, and hearing those first first singles. Yes, thank you so, so much. It was so lovely speaking with you. Great talking to you. Take care. You Never too. Bye. Bye. Bye.